So you indicated before that there is a certain level of harmonization, uh, of course, with uh, uh, IDD. But ultimately, what we see as well is that uh, the implementation of the IDD in each of the European country uh, is quite different. And there are still some specificities that are applicable. We also see that uh, the approach of a regulator can be very different from another regulator. And there, there is also the question of the alignment between uh, them. But so when we see uh, the e-commerce, when we see uh, the, the digitalization of uh, the industry, it comes also with a globalization. It comes with a cross-border program. So uh, at Cover, for instance, uh, I would say that the majority of the program that we deployed are cross-border. So we deal all the time with uh, different jurisdictions. So... Do you think that uh, we can expect a bit more harmonization in the future? Uh, is there any uh, sign that uh, there will be more alignment by the regulators and the future uh, regulations? About harmonization, we have two different topics, I think. There is firstly the way to get a license and to conduct your business, the rules of conduct, which are harmonized by IDD and will be significantly the same everywhere. And then you have that concept of passporting of your license. So if you get your license in Italy, you will be able to do cross-border business within the EU without uh, any supplemental license in any other country. Of course, different now with the UK. Uh, but that's that's about the regulatory status of, of the insurance intermediary as, as such. Uh, that's one thing. When we come to harmonization, of insurance law, which is the other topic. It's about the product that will be sold by you and your partner to your customers on a cross-border basis in various jurisdictions. Of course, there is a, a clear appetite for everyone to commoditize the terms and conditions and to duplicate them the more, the, the more easily possible within the various countries you are targeting. And there, that's true that there is no European law of insurance or regulation that would harmonize the concept, the key concept of an insurance contract. And there you may have indeed a different uh, rules of law for the same, the same rule will not be the same everywhere. What may be a legal uh, fact is that the master policy that you will have in place will have its own governing law. The question is then whether you can use that governing law of the master policy in every other country, whether uh, you could use English law, Belgian law, or German law of your master policy for a customer in Hungary or in Spain or that sort of things. So legally speaking, usually the, the, the applicable law to a policy is based on the residence of the policyholder. And here we have a policy one policyholder, which is the master policyholder. But we, we quickly come to the conclusion that from a compliance perspective, it's it's not doable to sell an English law policy to someone in Spain, for instance, and that you will need to deal with its consumer protection rules locally. Um, and that also comes from a concept of general good provisions that insurers and insurance intermediary need to comply when they do cross-border service. So the exercise of localization is important from a compliance perspective, also because you will need to put the, to mention the, the local ombudsman and that sort of thing. So you cannot avoid a certain number of uh, mandatory provisions and localization.